All right, guys, welcome. This is attempt number two. I'm doing this live stream here in Guiyang. Um, we are at the Big Data Expo here. And uh, what we see here is different applications of big data. Most people tend to be afraid of big data. When they think of big data, they automatically think of, oh, Google, Facebook, sharing my information, et cetera, et cetera. But what we see here is applications of big data for industry, applications for uh, government, applications for private entities. Um, this is the, the China Telecom, the China Unicom, sorry, uh, booth. This is their stand. And they have shown different examples of how they use the data that they collect from their users for different things. Um, here, for example, this is the China mobile uh, big data. Uh, let me see. All right, guys, let me know if the audio is fine, if you can hear me well. Okay, check this one out, for example. They have a drone with a camera, and this camera can actually give them a lot of information about the buildings, about the coverage area, and they can share this information with entities that need this for you know, planning different aspects of government. Um, so it's interesting how they all use blue screens. It's something that uh, I hadn't seen before, but for whatever reason, when it comes to big data, everybody uses blue screens. Hey, I see two guys uh, on screen. Hey. hey. All right, let's move over here. Let's see what else do we find. Um, I just saw something that was kind of interesting. These are smart Mickey. Okay, this is a language learning uh, tool that uses big data. All right, hello. Je ne suis pas quoi dire. Qu'est-ce que c'est toi? Bonjour, je n'ai pas d'importance. Comment allez-vous? Merci. Hey, that's pretty cool. Yes, uh, we're here. This is like a translation tool. So what I'm here, I see. Yeah, how are you? Uh huh. Can you get me a job? Can you follow this company? Can you do it? Okay. Okay. And it becomes from yes. We get eaten. Japanese. Uh huh. All right. This automatic yeah. translation. Yes. Is it based on the internet or is it a software that I can have on my phone or? It's based on our software. Okay. So I could have this on my phone or my computer. All right. Cool. Let's see more stuff. Hi. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Um, augmented reality. Okay, I know that uh, Neo is actually here, but I haven't seen their stand. We were here yesterday. This is, let me see which section of the expo this is. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, I am in the, uh, this is called the entrepreneur, sorry, Entrepreneurship and Innovation, E1. Okay. Hey, I was here yesterday and I did a good deed. The people from China Southern Power Grid had misspelled their signage. And I told like, hey, you got to fix that because well, it doesn't look good. Now that I'm coming again today, I can see <laughs> what they've done and they fixed it. Let me show it to you. Big data. Okay, let's talk about some of the things that they do here in uh, China Southern Power Grid and how they use big data. So that's the sign that I was telling you about. It was misspelled yesterday. All right. So, um, Southern, uh, Southern Power Grid, what they do is they take a lot of the information and they feed that data 
to people so that they can see their consumption, they can see where their power is going and how they can implement uh, better usage of data, better use of power. Here, for example, is a, a map of Guizhou, and they're telling us how, if you remember, Guizhou was a very poor province in China. But over the last five years, number one, the coverage of power has increased dramatically. The second thing that has changed is that the amount of um, downtime or dropping of power, the power outages have been reduced dramatically. So again, displaying what they do with the data that they collect from users. And as I said, it's all blue screens. Don't really know why. Hey, that's us. <laughs> okay, let's go to I'm not check this one. Oh, this one's they use them. This uh drones, they use them to uh check the status of different um different power lines. So if there's damage or with a tower or something, they can send these things up and well have a better idea, clear idea of what's going on with the, with the network, basically. All right. I think I'd like to go to the other, um, the other stands because there's a bit more of international brands that we might be familiar with. This is all very local, very Chinese, of which I don't know too much. Michael Young, you got this. Yes, I do. Thank you. <laughs> uh, just to let you know a little bit about uh, my project, I will be leaving Guiyang today. Uh, later, around 1030, we'll be heading out to a very tiny place in the southeast of uh, Guizhou, Guizhou to, to visit a very small town called Yingping. Um, it will be something very beautiful. Uh, I've heard of this beautiful uh, mountains and beautiful scenery over there. So that's where I'll be for the next three days shooting some videos. Whenever I find a bit of time, I edit videos. And uh, if I have the ability, I'll make some of these live streams, which I hope you guys enjoy. Okay, we're getting to like, the main central area where all the big performances take place. Right there is the big screen. So there are like shows, performances, and, and then speeches that take place here. But let's go to the other side with some of the brands that we all know and love are actually. We are the service center. Uh, just yesterday, I shot, um, okay, check out all the companies that are here. Where's, where's Neil? I saw Neil was here. Okay, there you go. If I do cloud, a whole bunch of clouds. <laughs> it's interesting to, to, to know that uh, Guiyang is the future Silicon Valley of China. Um, it's got all the characteristics of uh, Silicon Valley. A lot of the industries uh, from the IT and from um, software development are already coming here. And it's an industry that the government is pushing really, really hard because, well, it's a very agricultural economy here in Guizhou. So they're trying to look for different avenues to improve the, the condition of the income, and the revenue of the country. All right, seem to have been frozen again. Let me see. Okay, I think I'm back. Is my phone freezes for some reason? I don't know. Okay, so here we go. This is the Alibaba stand right behind me. So let's see what they have inside and what they can show us inside. All right. Mm 
orange technology. Okay, this is uh, information about traffic. Yeah. Let's see what else we got over here. Okay, a lot of big data is actually used. Uh, good morning, Noel. A lot of big data is used for um, electric cars nowadays because they they are network connected, so they actually communicate with the road itself. So there's cameras, there's there's a lot of information that the road is actually communicating with the cars. So that's a very important part of big data use here. Let's see what we have here. Okay, so these are Alipay uh, vending machines. You can actually um, buy anything that's inside, just scanning the code here. So this is different in POS, like point of sales, point of sales um, applications that people can use with Alipay. Okay, this is Tencent from uh, Shenzhen. Let's see what they got. So remember guys, big data is not a scary thing. Big data is something that is used for improving the harmony and the, the safety and the living conditions of people. It's very interesting, man. There's a lot of cool things here. All right. Now, <laughs> we are in Tencent. Okay, let's walk around. It's also used for medical use. Yeah, for medical applications. So, for example, if somebody um, is having um, medical issues, they can share a lot of the information with different hospitals from different areas, and different experts can actually help uh, rural areas. So, this helps big data clouds help people get access to better, um, better life, basically, better uh, medical care. This is another example of city management help with um, big data, collecting different kinds of information. This is more industrial, apparently. Let's see. Here's a presentation. Sorry. Okay, I want to go into the Huawei one. Huawei looks very interesting to me with everything that they do and everything that they're doing. So Huawei is bringing to this fair some of these cameras that are used for uh, different things. This one, for example is for helmets so it detects whether a worker or an employee is wearing a helmet or not and then it sends a report and alert and then uh, safety is improved at the at the workplace now this one is pretty interesting the, i think it's this camera camera right here it helps with traffic as you can see um i was asking about this one yesterday and some of the things that it does it's for example, it adjusts the red lights when they're going to change. So say, for example, there's a very big truck and it calculates the speed at which the truck is traveling. And if it knows that it's not going to have enough time to stop, it's going to delay the red light for a little bit. And uh, then uh, the truck has enough time to actually travel safely throughout the, um, the intersection. This one right here, I was asking yesterday, this one uh, uses uh, a new method, a new system called ultralight, which basically has two advantages. Number one, it doesn't blind people when it takes a picture, but it also renders much higher resolution. This is the, the one that they have. It can be used, for example, to make sure that people are wearing seat belts or that people are not talking on the phone when they're driving. There's another aspect that's interesting to this, to, to the high definition of this kind of camera right here, is that in China, it used to be that if you break a uh, law driving, they would, they would take points out of a driver's license, any driver's license. 
Uh, so, for, for example, if I went through a red light, yeah, um, they would deduct, say, three points from my driver's license. Or if I talk to these guys, they're like, hey, can I get three points for your driver's license? I'll give them a little bit of money and they would take away points from his license, not mine. So people who were getting close to the maximum, which is 12 points, would do that. There was an emerging market for buying points from uh, driver's licenses. Now with this kind of camera, you can't because it actually takes your face and it has to match your driver's license. So whoever was driving at the time of this uh, infringement of the law, then they will, they will actually have to pay the price. They have to take the, the points from them. So as I said, this is the Huawei, um, this is a Huawei booth. They're introducing this is a touch screens. I use some of these touch screens at my school, but not Huawei. I use a different brand. These are boards for teaching. Wow, so check it out, sorry. So whatever she writes on the board is digitally transferred to the computer, like a real-time scanner. And then of course it can be shared uh, via WeChat or... <laughs> Quantum Alchemist, that's what they do with minus the, excuse me? I'm also media man, so. So this is basically how it works. Um, whatever they write on the board, they can they can transfer it via WeChat or anything to the students, the parents. So it's something that they can they can use for learning. So the cameras are. Let me see. Uh, on the rise globally, same goes for the West. And so far, privacy aside, they deliver good results. Yes, as I said, uh, it's it's a tool. It can be used for good, it can be used for bad. Right here, medical use, medical applications. That's a good, that's a positive, I would say. <laughs> Take it out. Sharing data with one, with, from one patient with doctors all over the country, for example, to give people access to better health. All right, let's move on, see what else we see down here. Jackie Lee, good morning. Good to see you, man. All right, let's see what else we find. Yesterday, I saw a robot that actually makes coffee. Hey, guys, if you're enjoying this uh, live stream, make sure to hit the like button, okay? So that the algorithm begins to do its work. Okay. This one here, which company is this? I don't know. They're pulling out information and promoting Beijing 2022. What's it called? But again, all these huge boards pulling out information and giving information so that people can actually make decisions, either companies or, or governments. Um, it's the future. It's the future. And Guiyang is the pilot city in China when it comes to um, cloud data and uh, big data. So, GM Tech. Oh, check it out, Mate One. Let's see, Mate One is the delivery system, uh, the delivery platform, so like Uber Eats back in America. So what Mate One does is it shares a lot of information with users, um, and it delivers real time information. Wow, this drone for delivery of packages. Meituan Autonomous Delivery. How cool is that? You got your Meituan battery chargers. Made a video about that. Oh, save it What else do we have here? a and Group. Okay, this is the one that a lot of people have been talking about where Jack Ma is. Well, just fixing this a and Group. <laughs> All right. Hey, how are you? Nice to see you. 
Let me pull that up on the screen. It's good to see you, man. Fuji Film. What do we have here? Toshiba. 580 terabytes? That's insane. Okay, gotta figure out what that is. Let's see, let's see, let's see what we find here. Fire. Um, a lot of big data is about making decisions. When you get the information, then you can make decisions based on that information. And that's what big data is about. It's about sharing what can be done, what decisions can be made. So, yeah, we all, we all fear big data when it comes to social media use. You know, like when Google shares whatever you've done, whatever you've searched, when Facebook shares whatever you've been uh, searching for. That's, that's not necessarily nefarious, but it's not a positive use of big data. What we're seeing here is very positive use of big data. Well, fun information. Okay. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Eh? Oh, hello. That's it, say. <laughs> Companies that I've never heard of. So I'm going to be quick on this one and get to the ones that I'm interested in. Wake Data. That's a good name. Wake Okay, Yang Yi 360. Union Tech. No idea what they do. Right, I'll be heading out and going to the other information science. Let me see. Is this one here? Kenny. Hello. Let me see what they show on here. It's kind of like virtual reality. It seems to me. All right. Yeah. Virtual reality kind of thing. People are interacting with. controlling traffic with his hands. All right, let's move on. The business of screens in China must be so good. <laughs> Every single expo, expo is just screens, screens, screens all the time. All right. Going across the other hole to see what we can find over there. Ooh, I know somebody who will be interested in this one, Mr. Weather. This one's called the Full Truck Alliance. Check it out. This is the Full Truck Alliance, oh, yeah. where they use big data to control trucks, basically. Uh, if you have a fleet of trucks, you can control it with big data. All different information related to your fleet of trucks. Yeah. We have a big truck over here. Let's see what they do. Refrigerated delivery of goods, things like that.
We got this gyrating thing on top. It's like a 360 composition of yourself, I think. <laughs> All right, let's see what else we have here. Food truck alliance. Never heard of it. Oh, this is huge. This is Jing Dong. Jing Dong is a competition of Taobao, so to speak. Jing Dong Retail Cloud. Oh, these are the, the, the delivery trucks. You know how Amazon delivers things to you back in the West? Well, this little cart here will deliver your goods using AI. It's so cool. It's got all kinds of sensors. This is all for self-driving, yeah? It's got sensors on the side, sensors on top, sensors at the front. Sorry, let me go. I'm going in front of people. But I'm going to go this way. Thank you. This is one that's a bit smaller. One, two, three, four, five, six, six different compartments where you can get your delivery of goods. JD Cloud. So, okay, this way. Oh, digital currency, guys. Digital currency coming to play. It's going to be huge in China and the world. JD. Okay, what are they explaining here? Okay. Similar to what we saw on the other side with Alipay, they have here this um, automated vending machine. So you can get this to sell whatever your product is, and people can just get it from Jing Dong. All right. <laughs> okay, guys, well, um, there is another hole, but we arranged to meet my team at around 10, 10, and I still have a few minutes to, to walk to meet them. So I'm going to have to wrap it up here. Noel, Russell Brand spoke about COVID passports and the state of control of people's freedom. From Okay, let me pull this up. Uh, Russell Brown spoke about COVID passports and the state of control of people's freedom from here on. The delivery purchase system sort of it fits into that world of order and control. Um, not sure what to make with that information. My mind was somewhere else. Okay, guys, that's all the time we have for today. Thank you so much for watching this video. And as always, if you like it, give it a thumbs up. And if you like the content on my channel, consider subscribing to it. And until I see you again from another beautiful place here in China, take care. Bye for now, guys.